Okay, so here we have an overhead depiction of the solar system as it should appear right now. Actually, the aspect ratio is just a little bit off, but it's not too far off, that's okay. The, plant, the orbits are a little bit elliptical, but not quite as elliptical as they, as they look up there, so, but that's all right. So uh, it's, it's kind of amazing what we know about the solar system these days, and a lot of it has been made possible by recent technology. We've actually sent probes out into space, and we've landed them on Mars and, and Venus, and, and uh, even a, a moon of uh, Saturn, Titan. And it's just amazing that we have that technology. I feel very blessed to live in the age in which we live, where we have these modern technologies, and we know so much about the universe. I would have been so bored in the 1800s. I really would have. Um, it's just, it's neat what we can do these days. So you're seeing the, the inner four planets here as, um, really as they would appear today, actually, that's their current positions. This is looking over sort of the north pole of the solar system, if you will, and that's what they look like. The orbits of planets are ellipses with the sun at one focus of the ellipse, and uh, the, an ellipse is a distance, um, is, is the set of all points that are equidistant from two points called foci, each one is a focus, and the sun is at one of those, the other one's empty, and it was, uh, Johannes Kepler, who figured that out. Uh, he figured out the, the way planets move, he figured out the nature of their orbits being ellipses rather than circles, which was thought previously. And he figured out too that, that planets, when they orbit the sun, uh, those that orbit closer um, make a loop in less time. And those that orbit farther away have a greater period, have a longer orbit. And he figured out the exact mathematical relationship between the two, that the period squared is proportional to the distance cubed. Pretty neat. And you might think, well, I think I, could, I think I could probably figure that out by measuring the orbit there, but he didn't have a computer simulation like this. What he had was a list of numbers recorded by Tycho Brahe that, that were the position of Mars as seen from Earth. And so we don't, ha we don't have the luxury of having this sort of God's eye view of the, of the solar system, what we do today, but Kepler didn't. He, it, I hope you appreciate the difficulty in figuring out how planets move when you're on one of them, okay? So it's, you're, you're at, you have to solve two problems simultaneously, the Earth's motion and whatever other planet you're looking at. And that, that takes some brain power. Kepler was a smart man and he was a very devout Christian and a biblical creationist, by the way. He believed that God created in six days a few thousand years ago. And uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of funny, this modern, uh, propaganda we hear that the Bible is anti-science and well the founding fathers of the various disciplines of science did not believe that. We saw that in the previous presentation. It's true of Kepler as well. He was a very devout Christian and recognized that God's glory is revealed in God's cosmos. So the outer planets are quite a bit further away. You can see that the scale is pretty tremendous there and you really have to speed up time. The inner planets really are whipping around there to get the outer planets just to, just to do anything at all. So Jupiter takes about 12 years to orbit the sun. Saturn takes 29 years to orbit the sun once, and it just gets more ridiculous to get out to Pluto, and it takes 248 years to orbit the sun once. So it hasn't orbited once since it was discovered back in 1930, but uh, which is kind of interesting. So there you go. The, the orbits of the planets, they're all approximately in the same plane. And uh, we can, let's see if we can shift. Sometimes you'll see it, yeah, so there's, there's kind of an edge on view. They're not exactly in the same plane, but they're very close. Especially now that Pluto's been kicked out. Pluto's a little tilted, but it's not a planet anymore, so we don't have to worry about it. So sometimes in, in books, you'll see the solar system in a perspective view where it's tilted like that and people get the impression that the orbits are very elliptical thinking that's an overhead view. They're, they're not, they're just slightly elliptical. And that is a design feature. If the Earth's orbit were extremely elliptical, we'd get very close to the sun and we'd burn to death or then, and then half an orbit later, we'd all freeze to death, right? But uh, the or there is a few million miles difference uh, over the 93 million miles, is, which is our average distance from the sun. So there we go. What I want to focus on today is um, the discoveries that have been made as a result of spacecraft that have ventured out into the solar system. We have now visited all the planets in our solar system via unmanned spacecraft, and even a lot of the moons of these planets. And Pluto, we got to see Pluto close up back in 2015. That was very exciting for me, because back when I was a kid, Pluto was a planet. And it was, uh, you know, we'd, by 89, we'd visited all the big planets, but Pluto wasn't even on the, on the list. And I thought, I want to know what it looks like, and now we do. 
So what a great time.